Hey everyone, Mr. Fransky here. Uh, I'm going to be doing a calculus lesson today. Uh, we're going to be talking about derivative rules today. Uh, these are some things that make your life a little easier um, so we don't have to use limits to be able to evaluate derivatives every time. So students will be able to apply the basic polynomial derivative rules to a series of functions. And so we're going to go through rules one through four here. There are a total of six. You'll see the last two in the next video. So some vocabulary we're going to talk about. We will still talk about limits just a little bit. Derivatives, of course. Uh, differentiability, which is what we talked about in 3.2. And then, of course, um, just exponents. We're going to see a lot of uh, deals with exponent rules in this video. All right, so let's start off with some bell work. We have a piecewise function here. Uh, looking to find the b value that's going to make this piecewise function continuous. So then we want to see if it's differentiable at x equals negative 5. So why don't you pause the video, give this a shot, talk with a neighbor, and see if you can figure it out. All right, let's see what you came up with. So remember, to be continuous from the left and right side, the limits have to be the same. So we're just going to plug negative 5 into both functions and see if we can make them equal. So we plug negative 5 in here. We have 1 half times 25, because negative 5 squared is positive 25. It's 25 over 2. In the other one, if we plug in negative 5, we have negative 5 times negative 5, which is 25 plus b. So we need uh, 25 plus b to be equal to 25 halves. So we just have to subtract 25 from each side. 25 is 50 halves. So b is going to be 25 halves minus 50 halves, which is negative 25 halves. So we found our b value. Now we have to see if it's differentiable. So to do that, we have to check the derivative from both sides. So let's see what the uh, derivative of this first function is. So we're still using limits here. So we're going to do the limit as h goes to 0. 1 half times x plus h squared minus 1 half x squared divided by h. Limit as h goes to 0, 1 half times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 1 half x squared divided by h. Distribute in the 1 half here. The 1 half x squared is going to cancel. We'll have just xh plus 1 half h squared. And that's all divided by h. Limit as h approaches 0. So we'll pull out an h and cancel it out. We have this as x plus h, x plus 1 half h. And h is turning into 0, so this is just equal to uh, x. So our slope of this function is given by x at any point. So at negative 5, uh, the slope is negative 5. So I'll write that. So our derivative, so f prime, of, that's why I should write it. f prime of negative 5 is negative 5. Now let's try from the other side. The other side should be easier. We have negative 5x minus 25 halves. That's the b value that we got by making sure it was continuous. Um, and the, the slope of this is really easy to find. I could do it with a limit, but this is a line. The slope is always negative 5. Hey, they're the same. So yes. Because the slope is the same from both sides, this is a differentiable function at x equals negative 5. Very cool. All right. So let's try some of these rules. So we're going to do the first four, like I said. And we'll kind of keep a running total of them as we go. Uh, so the first one is that the derivative of a constant is 0. So c is some constant. There's no variable in there. Let's see if that makes sense. Well, if you have a constant, c, if you were to graph that, y equals c, Let's think about that. That would be a horizontal line right at c. Well, what is the slope of that line always? It's 0. So it makes sense that if your function is just equal to a constant, then f prime of x is always going to be 0. Makes sense to me. Okay, don't really need to even prove that. This is probably the most important derivative rule. We use it all the time. It's called the uh, power rule. And we've seen it a couple times already. We've done some derivatives. You might remember we did the derivative of x squared. Like the first day, we talked about derivatives in chapter 3. And we did the whole limit thing. And we found out it's equal to 2x. Then we did the derivative of x cubed. We found out that it's 3x squared. If you do the derivative of x to the fourth, you might see the pattern here. It's 4x cubed. The derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth. 
I'm going to do a separate video that actually proves this formula. It's pretty cool. It uses what's called the binomial theorem. If you took AP stats, you probably haven't seen it before. Um, but it's a cool theorem, a really cool proof, and I encourage you to check it out. But for now, we just need to know that this rule works. It only works when n is not equal to 0. Let's think about why that is. If n was 0, we'd be doing the derivative of x to the 0 power. What's x to the 0 power? That's 1. So this would be the derivative of 1. Well, now we're back to a constant. That's 0, right? Which is not x to the negative 1. It's not, well, I, I guess it is. It's 0 x to the uh, negative 1. Sure, that's still 0. So it works. I take back what I said. This works for any n. That's kind of cool. All right. So next up, we have our uh, derivative of a constant times a function. We can pull that constant out. So that's like if we want to do the derivative, uh, let's do something that uses the last one. So let's do like uh, 5x squared. What I could do is I could pull the 5 out, do the derivative of x squared using our power rule, and then multiply them back at the end, 10x. Usually, though, people just use this by saying the 2 times 5 is 10, it's just 10x. But you can pull the constant out and bring it back in if you want to. It's kind of nice. This will be more useful when we start doing like trig functions. If you have like 5 sine x, something like that, you can pull the 5 out and bring it back in. Um, but the reason for this is if you look at the limit definition, uh, h approaches 0, of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. If you put a constant in front of f of x, you can just pull it out to the front, right? So you have limit as h approaches 0, constant times f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And then our limit rules are that you can pull the constant out to the front. So this is really just using the, the limit rules to be able to say, if you have a constant, you can throw it out for a second and then just bring it back in afterwards. All right, one more. Uh, if you add two functions together, you can do the derivatives separately and then add them together. This is another thing that just comes directly from limit rules. So this is useful like if you're trying to find the derivative of like, um, I don't know, x squared minus 2x plus 1, something like that. Well, we can do the derivative separately. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of negative 2x, this is a, um, a constant slope function. So this derivative of that is always negative 2. Derivative of 1 is 0. So it's just 2x minus 2. The linear ones are sometimes the ones that get people tripped up initially because n is 1. Just remember that um, what you're basically doing this is negative 2x to the first power. The 1 comes to the front. You drop that x, uh, exponent down to 0. So it's negative 2x to the 0, which is negative 2. But it makes sense to me because negative 2x, that's just a line with a slope of negative 2. Slope is always negative 2. That's your derivative. So all this is saying is you can split it up. You can do it individually. The plus and minus signs just stay the same. So let's try this with some examples. So first, some polynomials. So we got x cubed plus 6x squared minus 5 thirds x plus 16. Based on our last example, why don't you try that? Try both of these. Uh, pause the video for a second. Give them a shot. All right, let's try them together. So this one, I think, would give us 3x squared. Just from our power rule, 3 comes to the front. Reduce that power by 1. That's the power rule plus 12x minus 5 thirds. And the plus 16 doesn't matter. Another interesting thing about those constants on the end, think about what that does to the function. That just shifts them up or down. Would you agree with me that, um, I don't know, something like this, and this guy right here, those two would have the same derivative? Because it really doesn't matter where you are moved up or down. If you're just talking about the slope, the slope's the same at all the points on this graph. doesn't matter if you're adding or subtracting at all. Kind of cool. All right, the next one, we're going to have negative 12x cubed. That would be plus what? 6 sevenths x. There you go. That's all there is to it. So I brought this one in because I was like, well, the power rule, do you think it extends to weird powers? It turns out it does work. You just have to think about what the power is. This is x to the negative 1. So we're trying to find the derivative x to the negative 1 plus x to the, as a root, that's 1 half. So we do the same thing. Negative 1, x to the negative 2. Just came to the front and then reduced the power by 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. This one's weird. 1 half, x to the negative 1 half. You might remember this from when we did the derivatives the other day, um, when we did it with limits. This is negative 1 over x squared. And then this is 
1 over 2 root x. And there's your derivative. So way faster than doing limits, though. Pretty cool. All right, that'll do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one to do the last two derivative rules.